Today I'm flying from Nashville, Tennessee to Greenville, South Carolina, and you get to come along with me because I'm gonna record the whole flight with my Vision Pro goggles. Or at least that was the plan. See, there's some issues with the Apple Vision Pro that I haven't seen anyone else on YouTube talking about, and I thought as a pilot, I'd talk about my experience. I saw the Apple Vision Pro being used by another YouTuber in a video where he's kicking field goals, and you could actually see everywhere that his eyes were moving. So I got a pair, and I thought I would fly with them, do pre-flight, checklists, things like that, so everybody can see exactly what I see. And hopefully, I can take a video on landing, and you could see exactly what I was looking at on landing, and the instruments, and everything. When we're parked, the Apple Vision Pro in perfect lighting conditions is awesome, and it gives you a brand new view for my passenger seat and of the pre-flight process. I can wear it, and you can actually see everywhere that my eyes are going, it's stable, and the video looks really great. If you watch the video that I took back on another set of Apple Vision Pro, you can actually use immersion mode and you're in full surround just like you're there right with me. It literally looks like you're looking into a window with the way the cameras capture depth. It's amazing. And that, to me, is the coolest, most futuristic aspect of this whole thing right now. But as soon as we begin takeoff roll, it's completely hit or miss on if the Vision Pro will lose tracking and effectively become unusable. They've got accelerometers in there, so as I'm bouncing around and accelerating, it gives me this tracking failed advisory. Other reviewers on YouTube have shown this issue on the subway or in other narrow vehicles when it says things are too close to the cameras. But on a flight prior to this one, one of my videographers was able to get it to work but he had to stare at a specific point on the dashboard, which obviously isn't the most exciting thing to look at and is basically just like a GoPro video. However, the video looks a little bit better, especially in low light conditions, which I'll show you at the end. So there is some merit to using this. The other thing that I like is it actually moves around. It's effectively a camera on my head, like putting a GoPro on my head where you can follow my eyes or my passenger's eyes. I think this flaw of getting tracking failed on a consistent basis is definitely holding this device back from being something that I would actually consider using during flight. While there isn't any official ruling from the FAA on if the Vision Pro itself is safe to use while flying, I haven't personally tested the headset in the air, but I allow my passenger to use it in the right seat instead. The way I look at it, it just doesn't really make sense for me to fly using it, especially takeoff and landing. It's just very unsafe. So I don't recommend that any pilot actually fly with this thing. I used to fly with night vision goggles all the time in the Navy. Every night flight that we flew, we pretty much had to be on NVGs or night vision goggles. And it reduces your field of view from 188 degrees down to about 40 degrees. And so you constantly have to move your head. While the Apple Vision Pro has a better field of view, you still don't have a full 188 degree field of view. So it definitely blocks a lot of your visibility up, down, and left and right. Additionally, we would do a ton of emergency procedures with night vision goggles. So if we had a tube failure or a battery failure, we would have a backup set with us and they would also be briefing our co-pilot that if we're on short final or in a dangerous critical path of flying, then we would pass the controls quickly to the other pilot so they're always ready to fly. I don't have that luxury in the TBM, so it doesn't really make sense for me to fly with these things just in case they fail. If the battery dies, or the whole thing goes wonky, it's just a black screen that you're looking at, at on short final or during takeoff or something like that. Very unsafe. And I think the typical general aviation pilot doesn't think through all of these things on a regular basis. And there's not any kind of checklists or steps when it comes to the Apple Vision Pro. There might be in the future. I do think the future of checking flight plans, looking at for flight in there, actually seeing waypoints along the way while wearing these glasses uh, is a possibility of like a massive upgrade and increase, basically like a heads up display that we had in the military or an actual HUD, which we used on night vision goggles and a lot of other places that showed us airspeed, altitude, radar altimeter, flight path, all kinds of things like that, that you could see right on the goggles and not have to look down at the instruments at all. That would be really effective on takeoffs and landing Landings where you can just keep your scan straight outside. I also take a ton of notes down on my iPad and, and reference it all the time. So this just stops the scan from down in the cockpit. I'm interested to see what future iterations of the Vision Pro do. And if we start seeing apps that d are designed or structured or integrated more with aviation, maybe with a slimmer design and active pass through like the hollow lens, it might be a little bit better. As it stands right now, I don't think we'll see a pilot safe version of this for a few years, if not longer. And I think I'll stick with GoPros and my phone in the air. But what do you think? Would you want to see me continue to try the Vision Pro as it releases different updates or test it a different way? Or do you think that I just bought a $4,000 paperweight?
Let me know in the comments. Right now, I'll leave you with our landing into South Carolina to show you how the Apple Vision Pro handles low light. It really is cool. You can actually see exactly what I see outside and you, you'll be able to see the camera moving around a bit. And it's way better than I would get with a GoPro for low light conditions. I really enjoyed watching it back and looking at my airspeed and altitude and just kind of dissecting my landing to see how I did. If you like this stuff, like, subscribe, share with a friend, and I'll see you on the next video. Donaldson Tower, 975 Charlie Alpha with you on the GPS runway 5, full stop. 975 Charlie Alpha, Donaldson Tower, runway 5, clear to land, weather is VFR, wind calm, temperature 13, 2.13, altimeter 2982. 2982, clear to land, we're runway 5, 975 Charlie Alpha. All right, I got the runway in sight, we'll keep shooting the approach though. Sure. Where are we parking tonight? Uh, we are parking at Dallas and Jet Center, 5 trillion. Roger. Gears coming down, flaps are coming to take off. Capturing our glide path right here. Aircraft is nosing over. So I'm looking for two white and two red. That means I'm on glide path. Right now I got two white and two red. Exactly what I want to see at night. And I'm gonna slow back a little bit more. Get below 22 and drop the flaps to landing. There we go, below 122, flaps are landing. You can still see, you see them on the left there, two white, two red. Just the left of the run. Check, 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 Level 270. What are we hearing right now? Roger. A little hard to see the colors, but yeah, definitely yeah. see the runway. And I'm shooting for 90 knots right now. The runway. 500. At 500 feet. Y'all damper's off. Checklist complete. A little bit low, correct? There we go. Any lights are on. All of our lights look good. We got runway five. Gear is down. Checklist complete. Oh, we still got two white, two red. This looks really nice. Barely even have to fly. Minimums. Minimums. All right, there's the minimum for the approach so if i didn't have the runway in sight i'd have to go around gear is down 90 knots runway five so a little high level one out there we go air speed i use the force there at the end the runway has like no center line. CBM 5 Charlie Alpha, turn left at Alpha 3, taxi Alpha 3 and Alpha to the ramp. Left on Alpha 3, Alpha 3, Alpha to the ramp, 5 Charlie Alpha. 